Coming up today, U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has met with President Barack Obama in the White House to discuss January's handover of power. Obama said the two had an excellent conversation. The White House moves to allay concerns in South Korea about Trump's commitment to the alliance, saying Washington's partnership with Seoul supersedes any individual presidency or political party. First, in a widely expected move, Korea's central bank holds the key interest rate steady for the fifth straight month at a record low of one and a quarter percent. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Friday the 11th of November. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Arirang TV. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this afternoon, U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has met with President Barack Obama to discuss a smooth transition of power. It was the first time the two men have ever met face-to-face. -face. Sitting down at the White House on Thursday, Obama promised to do everything to help his successor succeed. Park Jong hong starts us off. The 90-minute meeting took place in the Oval Office with no aides in attendance. The meeting came just two days after Donald Trump's stunning defeat of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Uh, I believe that it is important for all of us, regardless of party uh, and regardless of political preferences, uh, to now come together, work together, to deal with uh, the many challenges that we face. Uh, Emerging from their talks, Obama told reporters the meeting was, quote, excellent and wide-ranging. President-elect Trump called President Obama, quote, a very good man and said it was an honor to meet with him. I very much look forward to dealing with the president in the future, including counsel. Uh, he's uh, he explained some of the difficulties, some of the the high-flying assets and some of the some of the really great things that have been achieved. Trump also said the meeting was only supposed to last 10 to 15 minutes, but went much longer than that. He said the two discussed a lot of different situations, some wonderful and some difficult, but he stopped short of elaborating on what those situations were. The president-elect is expected to strip away a number of the Obama administration's initiatives including the Affordable Care Act and the Iranian nuclear deal. In a press briefing, White House spokesperson Josh Ernest said Trump and Obama did not resolve their differences, but based on their agreement on the need for an effective transition, the meeting was a little less awkward than some might have expected. Park Jong-hong, Arirang News. Now, the United States has reaffirmed that Washington's ironclad commitment to the security of South Korea, one of its biggest Asian allies, will continue to strengthen under the presidency of Donald Trump. The statement out of the Obama-controlled White House came a matter of hours after Trump reaffirmed the alliance during telephone talks with President Park and Hay. Lee Min Young reports. The White House has pledged that the United States will strengthen its alliance with South Korea under the Trump administration. White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest said at a briefing this week that there's a Democratic and Republican tradition to strengthen Washington's alliance with South Korea, adding that the decades-long partnership supersedes any individual presidency or political party. Experts in the U.S. agree with the assessment out of the White House. Donald Menzulo, president of the Korea Economic Institute, said at a conference on Thursday that the U.S.-South Korea alliance will remain strong under Trump, saying the relationship between South Korea and the U.S. is unusual and nobody wants to see the quality of it impaired. Trump's victory has cast uncertainty over diplomatic relations between Seoul and Washington as he made a series of controversial remarks during his campaign over U.S. security commitments overseas. The remarks raise concerns that there could be a policy discontinuity in many areas, including North Korea, which requires a strong and united front by South Korea and the U.S. Trump's win also threw into doubt the fate of the free trade agreement between the two countries as the president-elect has denounced it as a job-killing deal and vowed to scrap or drastically change the pact. Lee Min-young, Arirang News. 
Now, after sending a message of congratulation to Donald Trump on his election victory, French President Francois Hollande has laid out his concerns. He called on Europe to overcome the challenges it faces in light of the election result. Hollande added that Europe will have to define with the new Trump administration the relationships between Europe and the United States, saying that is the shared mindset of all EU member states. He made the remarks after meeting with the Danish Prime Minister in Paris. Alon said the EU is an ally of the US, but added that the 28 nation bloc is able to act independently for its own interests and those of the world. Separately, in a letter to Trump, the French leader proposed holding discussions as soon as possible. Protests are spreading across the United States following Donald Trump's victory in Tuesday's presidential election, with demonstrators now flooding the streets of Washington, New York City and many other cities across that country. This is an expansion of protests that began in cities like Boston and Berkeley a day after Trump beat Hillary Clinton to the White House. Police installed barricades after thousands of demonstrators marched to the president-elect's residence at Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue and Trump International Hotel. Now, while the protests were largely peaceful, the NYPD confirmed that at least 65 people were arrested on various charges. Since Wednesday night, hundreds have gathered outside the White House and Trump's new Washington, D.C. hotel for a candlelight vigil and protest. Now, in other news, South Korea plans to initial a bilateral military intelligence sharing pact with Japan next year. Seoul's defense ministry spokesman said Friday that Seoul and Tokyo will hold their third working level meeting next week and proceed with the signing of the General Security of Military Information Agreement. The defense ministry says it has requested Seoul's foreign ministry register the agreed document to the Ministry of Government Legislation for approval. Under the deal, South Korea will directly be able to receive information on North Korea's missiles from Japan's surveillance satellites. The pact failed to materialize back in 2012 as critics here in South Korea accused the government of trying to seal the deal behind closed doors. South Korea's presidential office has moved to quash rumors about President Park Geun Hye's seven hour absence on the day of the Sewol Ho ferry disasters. The rumors say that the president was outside her office or receiving some kind of treatment on the day of the tragedy, which prevented her from handling the massive disaster. There were no visitors or hospital vehicles coming in or out of the presidential office of Chongwade on April 16th. The president was at her desk, committed to work as usual. The presidential spokesperson said President Park received 15 status reports on the situation over the course of the day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and received regular reports from her chief aides, including one from the welfare secretary. Now, several media outlets have reported that the president was receiving aesthetic treatment or plastic surgery at the presidential office on the day the Selho ferry sank in waters off Korea's southwestern coast on April 16, 2014, leaving over 300 people dead, most of them high school students, on a field trip. Opposition lawmakers are currently grilling key government officials, including Prime Minister Hwang gyo in relation to the ongoing probe into the abuse of power scandal that's swirling around the president's confidant. The lawmakers are focusing their inquiry on whether current cabinet... Uh, members, including the Justice and Culture Ministers, were part of any of uh, Chess and Shill's influence peddling and corruption schemes. The official said, however, that they cannot respond to questions because of the ongoing investigation into the case. Ruling party lawmakers are not taking part in the session. The CEO of Korea's largest steelmaker, POSCO, is set to be questioned by prosecutors on Friday evening over his alleged involvement with Chess and Shill and the sale of an advertisement subsidiary. Guan O Jun is the first chief of a major conglomerate to be summoned over matters related to Che, President Park's former confidant and the woman at the heart of the power abuse scandal. Prosecutors are looking into the sale of the advertising arm after the ad agency that bought it is said to have come under pressure from one of Che's associates, Cha and Tech, to hand over its shares. Cha is already in custody over further allegations of colluding with Che to use her connections with President Park to extort money from other Korean businesses. An arrest warrant is expected to be approved later today. 
Korea's central bank has kept its key rate steady at one and a quarter percent for November as policymakers gauge the impact of lingering uncertainties at home and abroad. Shin Se Min reports. The Bank of Korea has left its policy rate unchanged at one and a quarter percent in November, keeping the rate at a record low for a fifth consecutive month. The last rate cut was in June, when the central bank trimmed the figure by 25 basis points with the shock of Brexit weighing on the Korean economy. The central bank's decision to take a wait-and-see approach is seen as having been influenced by uncertainties at home and abroad, including the homegrown political scandal involving President Park Geun-hye and her confidant Choi Soon-sil. The scandal has left the country in mayhem as protesters demand the president to step down and parliament has rejected her nominee for prime minister, adding to skepticism about her choice of a new finance minister. The government-led measures to cool the property market is also seen as a factor that limits further monetary easing. The real estate market is seen as the main culprit behind the country's growing household debt, which has reached a record high of 1,200 trillion won, or over 1.1 trillion U.S. dollars as of the end of June. On top of that, the outcome of the U.S. election has sent shockwaves through the global financial market as investors worry of a potential shift in U.S. economic policies, including the likelihood of a political pressure on the Federal Reserve. Trump's victory could put a strain on the Federal Reserve's December rate hike scenario, as there is now added skepticism about a possible change in the country's monetary policy. That means other economists' monetary policies, which are heavily reliant on U.S. economic policy, will be impacted based on concerns that the Fed might not raise its rate this year. Market watchers say that with the volatility in the financial markets, Korea's central bank will have to hold off on changing its base rate, at least until stronger economic figures clear the path for the BOK to make its move. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Now, the South Korean government has vowed to keep close tabs on the financial market following Donald Trump's unexpected presidential victory. Speaking with economy-related officials this morning, Vice Finance Minister Che sang wok said the markets were showing signs of stabilization. Major markets in Asia rebounded on Thursday following overnight gains on Wall Street on Trump, Trump's speech calling for unity and an expected pickup in the U.S. economy. The officials, however, did not rule out the possibility of further market volatility given uncertainties over President-elect Trump's policies. They said they would step up monitoring of local and global markets and take stabilization measures if necessary. The Korean government is rolling up its sleeves to reduce fine dust in the country by investing millions of dollars in the, invest in the development of related technology starting from next year. Kim ji with the details. The Korean government has laid out a seven-year plan to reduce fine dust pollution in Korea by fostering advanced technology in the field. Under the plan, the government is seeking to use mid- and long-term research and development funds to spark economic benefits in Korea and abroad. The Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning, along with the Environment and Health Ministries, announced a plan on Friday. Together, they will invest more than 36.3 million U.S. dollars over three years starting in 2017 in the development of related technology and create a ministerial task force on reducing fine dust in Korea. The group will focus on analyzing analyzing the toxic components of fine dust, which is particulate matter that's less than two and a half microns, as well as on finding out how it's formed. If the particles cannot be reduced in size, the government hopes to reduce their toxic elements through innovations in tech development. The technological component of the plan will also be aimed at procuring concentration measures on the fine dust particles in real time. The measurements are currently limited to land and big cities but will now also include measurements of the air quality at higher altitudes and over the sea. The ministries are also planning to incorporate big data and artificial intelligence technology to improve the accuracy of fine dust forecasts. Through an emissions database, the ministries are hoping to raise accuracy rates from 62 percent to 75 percent by 2020 and increase the number of days forecasters can predict air quality levels from two days in advance to seven. The plan is part of nine strategically important projects the government announced in August. Kim Jian, 
Arirang News. The United Nations describes the North Korean regime's abuse of human rights as systematic and widespread. To help mobilize global action, to shine a light on the atrocities and hopefully bring about some change, North Korean defectors and experts are urging media outlets around the world to play their part. Oh Soo Young has more. Violations of the most basic human rights are an unfortunate part of life for the vast majority of North Koreans. Not being able to move across regions without bribing guards, my friends disappearing from their homes, I lived in fear, under suppression, but I didn't think these everyday violations of my freedom were anything out of the ordinary. What shed light on the injustice and abuses for 26-year-old Chu Chanyang were radio news reports streaming in from South Korean and U.S. channels. My family would gather early in the morning when the radio signals are strong and listen to the testaments of defectors in the South, how Kim Jong-il lived a life of luxury instead of working every day to supply us with food as the state-run media claimed. I even learned that only North Korea uses a calendar based on the birth of its founder, Kim Il-sung. At a seminar organized by Arirang TV in Seoul, North Korean defectors told 20 international journalists how the media can expose North Koreans to the outside world and the reality of their lives under the regime. A North Korea expert at the seminar said the international media can also heighten awareness across the world, stirring a global resolve to pressure Pyongyang to end the mistreatment of its people, from censorship in prison camps to torture and sex trafficking. Very significantly, this recognition that, uh, on, on balance, that uh, crimes against humanity uh, may be uh, being committed in the DPRK is a very important uh, finding for the international community because it, in a way, imposes a responsibility on, on all of us as the international community to take action to address the situation. Patrick Hafner, an Austrian reporter, hopes to highlight the plight of the average North Korean through his documentary on the lives of three defectors. The, the human rights situation in the North, we have reports, but it's, it's always hard to get really valuable or credible uh, information out. And I mean, the defectors, the um, they are, I hope, a credible source. With more of these stories told to the world and leaked inside the so-called hermit kingdom, defectors and experts alike hope that changes on the horizon for the long-suffering North Korean people. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. Well, that's where we're going to leave it on this Friday lunchtime here in Seoul. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out our website, arirang.com forward slash news. You can also download our smartphone application. All you have to do is search for Arirang TV in the usual places. Have a great day, and if we don't see you, a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.